Future coders and developers often find themselves in a difficult yet exciting position when it's time to choose their final project for coding bootcamp. It can be overwhelming to decide on the right project that will showcase your skills and knowledge while also being something that you're passionate about. But don't worry, we got you. Hi, everybody. It's your host, Samantha and Ciora, and we're back with another episode that you don't want to miss on the Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we talk about how to grow your career in the industry that was not designed with us in mind. We'll be diving deep into this topic, but before we do, if you're loving this podcast so far, make sure you head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. Okay. What is a coding bootcamp final project? Coding bootcamp final project is usually basically what you do at the end of your bootcamp course. And it's a way for you to showcase your everything that you've learned. And it's also something you can show to potential employers, part of your portfolio. Did you have a final project when you went to coding bootcamp? So my story is actually really interesting. I didn't really go to a bootcamp per se. I went to, I did a Udacity course in cloud DevOps engineering. So there wasn't, what I ended up getting was like a certificate at the end. But I did, in addition to that, build projects on my own um, that I used as part of a portfolio when I was looking for work thereafter. So kind of ish. I mean, we all have to have like these projects on our resume and like uh, something that's like kind of substantial, like not like a tic-tac-toe game. Maybe it can be. What was your final quotation marks project? Yeah. One of my projects that I showed during my first job search, that feels like it was so long ago, but it was just two years ago. One of my final projects was um, I built a GIF search engine, (laughs) which was really interesting because I had to use JavaScript and HTML and CSS, but I also had to interact with an API, which was like very new for me. Um, So that was one of the the projects that I had. And there were a couple others that I had on my portfolio and I can't even like remember them now. But yeah, that was one of the ones I had. No, I actually kind of want to dig into this project that you had, the GIF search engine. First of all, that's a fun project. Um, When you said that, I laughed and that's really cool to bring into interviews to like lighten the, the room up a little bit. What were some key factors of why you chose to incorporate certain things? Yeah, so one thing that I think is really important when you are building a project is to do something that you find interesting. I think sometimes people tend to do the like typical to-do list app and yada, yada, yada. But I think a, a much better way to like showcase your learnings and your personality and even make it like more fun is to do something that you are interested in. So I am like really into memes. I think they're funny and gifs and stuff like that. So that's why it made sense for me to do something like that. Like for instance, right now, um, a project that I'm working on to learn Next.js is to build a app that is basically for me to keep track of. Um, I'm really into K-pop, so I like to buy K-pop albums. So I'm building an app that's going to help me keep track of the albums that I buy and the ones that I want to buy and like categorize them and everything. So that's something that's interesting to me. So it means that when I build the app, it's going to, and it's something I also need. So because of that, it's going to be easier for me to build it. I'm going to have more interest in it. And it's also unique to me because that's what you want. You want your project to be like unique to you. Yeah. I I haven't listened to K-pop, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, is it the, uh, what's that boy band that's really popular? You talking about BTS? Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even like BTS like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the only one yeah, that I know. I know. Most yeah, people love- know that one. <laughs> but I'm glad that project was very unique to you. Cause that's very true. Like the more you like the project, the more you can build on it because you're more passionate about doing it. What are some things that employers are looking for when they see your final projects? Um, so they're definitely looking for you to use the technologies that are in their stack. So if you're applying to a company that uses Python and your projects don't have Python in it, your chances of getting higher, hired will probably be lower. They're also looking for things that are unique. And what I say, what I mean when I say that is that they don't want to see something that you learned from a tutorial. And that's kind of why I say like the to, to do apps don't really attract employers as much because you can find a million, probably literally a million tutorials on to do list apps, but they want to see that you, you are building on your own, which shows that you have problem solving skills and that you have the skills to work on things by yourself independently. Um, which is what they want to see. So I that's why I say it's good to have like a unique project, something that you came up with and that you built. And like, I'm not saying you have to like 
don't use Google, don't use Stack Overflow, don't look up tutorials, but you don't want to have a um, an app that you built solely because you followed a tutorial. You want to have something that you built on your own. Yeah, well, you say built on your own, but what if your coding project involves, like my coding bootcamp, I had a team of people. Is that allowed? I think that's even better, honestly, because coding co collaboratively is totally different from coding independently. and um, the, the idea is that when you get a job, you're going to work on a team, unless you're like at a one person startup or something like that, but you're going to work on a team with other people. And so that means that you're going to have to know how to communicate with a team. You're going to probably have to use, um, GitHub and Git. So open source is like something you're going to have to do. And that's what you need as, as far as real developer job as well. And like all those collaboration skills you get as far as like working with other people are very, very important to have. Um, which is kind of why I feel like sometimes when you are self-taught, that's a part that you kind of miss is that um, working with other people and other code bases that maybe weren't started by you or that have other people involved. So you have to get used to reading other people's coding styles. You also have to use comments and things like that. Like you have to be, it's just a totally different work style that is more, cl is closer to what it is in the workplace. So I think that would be actually more attractive to an employer. You also mentioned a little bit earlier about using pro programming languages that are specific to the job that you're looking for. Will that limit you from applying to other jobs? Like I only know JavaScript, but I probably want maybe want to work at Microsoft and they use C Sharp. So should I make a project specifically for Microsoft? So, okay. When I'm job searching, I try to and uh, like, before I even start now, this is how I do things now. I try to um, kind of have an idea of what kind of positions I'm looking for. So um, for instance, at one point, I was really, really interested in working in companies that had, or working in roles that would mean that I would work with AWS because I had learned a lot about cloud and things like that. And it just made sense to go in that direction. So I think if you want to go for positions where C Sharp is being used very often, I think that would be a good idea because it's going to be worth worth the time investment you take to learn the language and build with the language. Unless like Microsoft is like your dream company and you really, really want that job. Um, otherwise, I would say if it's just for one job and like one out of the 20 you apply for uses C Sharp, I probably wouldn't build a project solely for that. But if you have the time, it doesn't hurt, but you don't have to do that. Yeah, practicing code will never hurt you in the long run. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to your GIF search project. One thing I, I enjoyed that you pointed out was that it was like you had to use an API in order for you to accomplish that project. And I know employers will want to see that because usually we are definitely pulling from different APIs, whether it's from our company's APIs or external APIs. Is there anything else that you recommend to put in your project? Because you know employers are looking for that. Yeah. Um... It depends on what kind of roles you're going for. So for me at the time, I was primarily going for like web developer roles. And if you look at like the job description for a junior developer role, usually they will include working with React is very common. So I would definitely make sure I have like an app that you where React is like being used and it shows that I know what I'm doing with React. And then like, I like to always have an API involved or something that's going to like kind of make it beyond front end a little bit. And I say that because sometimes like you can make the most visually impressive front end app, but if all you're using is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and there are like no other elements, they might not get you as far as, as if you show that you can work with a database or if you show you can work with an API. I think adding a little something like that can can definitely help. Um, using any kind of like APIs or microservices and things like that can kind of show your employer that like, oh, this person is going like the extra mile, which is a good sign. Yeah, I definitely agree with those. One thing I also like to tell people is like, if you have the time, you can use like, make a login system. I mean, most apps have logins anyway. So like work with Firebase is a quick way to like connect your front end and back end. Um, another good example would be like the API, definitely like a must have, honestly, if you don't have an API, like <laughs> um, go put one in there right now. So those are good. Um, how long should you be spending on your final project before you guess 
start applying to jobs? Mm, that's a really good question because I know for myself, I tend to be like a perfectionist and I'm like, I want this to be like, and I also tend to be like super dramatic in what I want my final projects to be. So for instance, the GIF project actually started out as a meme search engine where I was going to like source the memes from like my own, like my own memes and things like that. And I quickly realized that like, that would be a lot more difficult than what I was like ready for. (laughs) So I had to scale the project down. A a lot. (laughs) But if I had gone with like, I'm going to do this meme search engine, like, I don't care, I'm going to figure it out. It would have taken me much longer. um, And I needed a job. So I feel that it really depends on what your goals are. If you really need a job, you don't want to spend like a year or six months or whatever, like building a project. But you want to make sure that it has like you want to, you definitely want to make sure it's within your skill range, but like also, I don't want to say difficult enough, but like I'll say dif- difficult enough that it looks attractive to employers and kind of look at the technologies that are in job descriptions. I haven't looked at a developer job description in so long, so I don't even know like what's what people are expecting now, but like look at those things and you want to have as many of those elements in your final project as possible. And that can kind of give you an idea of like whether or not you should be using that to showcase your skills during interviews. That is some great advice. Looking at the job resume to like build your project, which is amazing. Do you have any examples of other projects like other people have done that you've seen for their resume or coding bootcamp final project? Hmm. For a resume or final, I'm trying to think if I've seen any. I didn't go, like, I learned on my own. This is the, this is what I mean when I say, like, learning on your own is, like, a totally different experience. And if you can, like, do it with other people, I totally recommend it. But I can't even think of any right now because I was by myself. <laughs> so I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't think I can come up with any right now. That's a shame. Yes, I love that. Let's all get this money, y'all. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Bye.